Hello children and welcome to the online storytelling session for Jane Goodall Institute Singapore. Now this is the first session in 2022 and we are very excited. My name is Jasmine. Hello kids and I'm Safari Sid. Up here we have got Ida and Ida is going to be signing along through the whole session for us. Now as Jasmine already said kids, we have a very special session set up for you today as our very first one of 2022. Now, if any of you were paying attention to our last session in December 2021, you would know that we said it's going to be a special, exciting session today. And we will deliver on that promise. But, kids, for those of you that do not remember, and for those of you that are new to our storytelling sessions, we are the volunteers of the Jane Goodall Institute in Singapore. The, the Singapore Institute chapter is one of over 30 Jane Goodall Institutes spread across over 30 countries and has, was started up in the 19, early 1990s in Tanzania. And what we're here to do is to help people understand and spread the word of the wonderful, amazing lady, Dr. Jane Goodall. Now, Dr. Jane Goodall is known for being a world-famous naturalist that has inspired us with hope from some of her very early research and teachings done in Tanzania. And whilst she's over 87 years old now, she started at the very young age of 20 when she moved out to the eastern part of Africa to do her research on chimpanzees and other primates. And now she spends so much of her time traveling around the world, teaching us very, very important lessons and inspiring us at the Jane Goodall Institute and the Roots and Shoots program spread across the world to help in conservation and education. Now, talking of the wonderful work in conservation and education, Dr. Jane Goodall has very recently launched this amazing new book. It's called The Book of Hope. Uh, and it's written by, as I said, Dr. Jane Goodall and Douglas Abrams. It's available online and in many of the popular bookstores. And we strongly encourage you to go out there and get hold of it. Your mummies and daddies will really enjoy reading it to you, I'm sure. And I'm sure you would like to read it as well. It's also going to be relevant to some of our storytelling sessions throughout the year, as we'll be picking on some of the pivotal themes featured in the book and pulling out some of those stories. So we hope you will enjoy it, right Jasmine? Of course, we hope you will enjoy it. And now we have something very special for you. Uh, Dr. Jane Goodall herself has recorded a video introducing the next author uh, for our stories. His name is Neil Humphrey and we hope you enjoy it. Hello, this is Jane Goodall. I was born fascinated by animals and I always loved books. I loved stories about animals and the wild places where they live. I wrote stories too from a very young age. And when I was 10, my dream began. I will go to Africa, live with wild animals and write books about them. Well, as many people know, I did get to Africa and spent years studying chimpanzees in Tanzania. The research, by the way, still goes on today. But I left the forest that I love and the chimpanzees when I realized how fast chimpanzees and their forest homes were disappearing. And while I was traveling to raise awareness about this, I learned more and more about what we're doing to harm the environment. And I felt it was important to share what I was learning with the general public. So I began to write books and give lectures all full of stories. People forget numbers and statistics, but they remember stories. The Jane Goodall Institute Singapore is working to raise environmental awareness, especially through our Roots and Shoots program for young people of all ages. As part of this program, JGI has developed a storytelling program to get children interested in animals and the environment so that they become excited and want to protect nature. We're very grateful to the National Library Board for inviting us to be part of their storytelling playlist and for, <clears throat> and for providing us with this platform to share our storytelling video. 
Thank you, Neil Humphreys, for writing a children's storybook. Feeding the monkey really made a mess. It's about the Raffles band at Langer. It's a wonderful story to share. And thank you, Marshall Cavendish, for publishing it. Thank you. Hello, boys and girls. Where do you think I am? I am at the tree top suite at the magnificent Shangri-La Hotel in Singapore. Isn't it fantastic? And it's the perfect setting for my book about a very special animal, the Raffles Banded Langer. And this whole story is called Abbey Rose and the Magic Suitcase Feeding the Monkeys Really Made a Mess. Would you like to hear my story? I can't hear you. Would you like to hear my story? Yes, okay, here we go. Feeding the monkeys really made a mess. By me, Neil Humphreys, and illustrated by Cheng Pui Kun. Here we go. Feeding the monkeys really made a mess. Now, that's me. That's my daughter, Abby Rose. And we go on wonderful adventures together with our magic suitcase. But it's not me telling the story, it's Abby Rose. So let me get my Abby Rose voice. <clears throat> Here we go. My daddy likes to tell very long stories because he has very long legs. His legs look like two hairy caterpillars. Can you show me a hairy caterpillar? I wouldn't want two hairy caterpillars crawling up my legs. Would you? No. My daddy and his hairy caterpillar legs are really sweating. Daddy, I say, why are your legs so wet and wobbly? And he says, I've been running around talk, taking photos of this animal. Can you see it? The animal is even hairier than my daddy. Daddy shows me his sad face. Show me your sad face. Very good. The one he shows me when I forget to flush the toilet. He says these animals are... What are they? What are they? What are they? Monkeys, I say. I could be a monkey. Watch. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Show me your monkey. <laughs> Very good monkey. Daddy laughs. Yes, you are a little monkey, Abby Rose. I was going to say that these monkeys are in big trouble. Daddy shows me a big poster on the wall. Can you see it? These monkeys live in the rainforest and have bright round eyes. Show me your bright round eyes. Very good. They are called Raffles Banded Langers. Can we all say that together? Raffles Banded Langers. Fantastic. Raffles bag of lemons, I say. Raffles bag of lemons. Monkeys cannot be called Raffles bag of lemons. No, Abby Rose, this monkey is called the Raffles banded langer. And its rainforest home oh, is getting smaller all the time. Is that good? No. I punch the air. Let me see you do that. Ready? One, two, three. I punch the air and shout. Then I will go to the rainforest, Daddy. I will save the Raffles bag of lemons. Yay! You mean the Raffles banded langer, Daddy giggles. They are very shy and hard to find. You must look really carefully, okay? Keep looking. That's okay, Daddy. I'll find them with my magic suitcase, I shout. 
I stretch for my magic suitcase. Can you do that? Stretch, stretch, stretch your arms. I stretch for my magic suitcase. Luckily, I have long legs like daddy, but they are not hairy. My magic suitcase has two shiny golden locks and lots of letters. Can you see that? When I turn the letters, I can make the name of the place I want to visit. And where are we going? Where are we going? Yes, rainforest. I grab Billy. He is my best friend in the whole world of best friends. Okay, Billy, I whisper. Let's find the letters for rainforest. Let's do it together, ready? R A I N F O R E S T. And what does that spell? Jungle, correct. No, not jungle. Okay, one more time. R A I N F O R E S T. And what does that spell? Shangri-La? No, not quite. One more time. R-A-I-N-F-O-R-E-S-T. What does that spell? Rainforest, yes. The magic suitcase sparkles. We're ready, Billy, I whisper. We must hold hands and close our eyes. Okay, hold hands. Close your eyes. Ah, I can see you peeking. Close your eyes, close your eyes. Here we go. When we hear the click, we will be in the rainforest. We open our eyes. Wow, the rainforest is so green and so pretty and so noisy. noisy. There are funny noises all around us. Brum, brum. Can you do that? Yes, brum, brum. <gasps> Honk, honk, your turn. Honk, honk, very good. <gasps> Nino, Nino, you try. Yes, Nino, Nino. Billy, I say, are you making funny noises from your bottom? Certainly not, says Billy. Those noises are coming from the traffic outside. Towns are growing <gasps> and rainforests are shrinking. That's funny. Billy can talk in the rainforest. He never talks at home. I open my magic suitcase and show Billy my brilliant surprise. I've brought a bag of lemons to feed the monkeys because they are all called Raffles Bag of Lemons. I am so clever. Billy shakes his head. They are called Raffles Abandoned Alangers. What are they called? Wangers. Very good. But then the branches wobble. Let me see you wobble. That's it. And the leaves shake. Let me see you shake. Very good shaking. The monkeys are coming, I shout. They want to eat us, Billy. Run! So we run, run, everybody run, run, run. The monkeys climb down the tree trunks like this. They dash across the grass. They jump onto my magic suitcase. But they do not eat me. Maybe they will eat you, Billy, I say. No, they won't eat us, says Billy. They will eat your big mistake. Look, can you see? The monkeys rip open the bag of lemons. Can you do that? Rip. Very good. They look really happy. Show me your happy face. Very good. But Billy looks really angry with me. Show me your angry face. Oh. That was very angry. You should not feed the monkeys, he says. Monkeys can feed themselves. Well, I was giving a bag of lemons to the Raffles bag of lemons, I say. 
They are called Raffles Banded Langers, says Billy. And these monkeys are not Raffles Banded Langers. These monkeys are called Long-Tailed Macaques. Can you say that? Long-Tailed Macaques. Very good. And they cannot eat your food. Should we feed these monkeys? No, we should not feed these monkeys. Okay, here we go. On his tippy toes. On your tippy toes. Very good. Billy sneaks over to the monkeys. He walks really slowly and really carefully. And then he reaches out. Reach out your hand. That's it. Very good. Like that. And grabs the bag of lemons. Billy dumps the lemons in a dustbin. The monkeys run away. Monkeys eat up in the trees, he says. We eat down here. We eat in a dustbin? We eat in a dustbin? Oh, that's disgusting, I say. Oh, can you do that? Oh, dustbins smell like dirty underpants. Oh, oh. Billy takes me to a huge tree. Can you see? With red, hairy fruits. He says, what do these fruits look like? So I say, they look like my dad's hairy armpits. Billy shakes his head and says, no, Abby Rose, they are rambutans. The monkeys eat rambutans. They eat orangutans, I say. Orangutans? No, Abby Rose, not orangutans, says Billy. Rambutans. A rambutan is a fruit. Let's say it together. Ready? Rambutan. Can you do that? Rambutan. Very good. That's easy, I say. Orangutan. Tan. Orang -o -tan. It's a ramble tan, says Billy. Ramble tan. What is it? Ramble tan. Very good. It's a ramble tan. <gasps> but the hairy fruit with the funny name gives me an amazing idea. The monkeys like to hide, just like me, I say. But I always come out for my favorite food. So I bang the enormous tree trunk like this. Bang, 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 bang. You do it. Bang, 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 bang. Very good. I bend the long branches. You do it. Bend the long branches. Very good. And I shake the leaves as hard as I can. Show me, shake the leaves as hard as you can. Fantastic. Suddenly, the red Hairy fruits start falling out of the sky. Look, Billy, look. I'm getting the right food for the monkeys, I say. I'm getting lots and lots of rambutans. They are called rambutans, says Billy. And this is a really bad idea. <gasps> monkeys are shy, Abby Rose, if we make too much noise, they will run away. Uh-oh, uh-oh, and then something really scary <gasps> happens. What is it? Let's see. Everything starts falling out of the sky. Ow, 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 the big hairy fruits are hitting me. Ow, Billy, ow, I say. Why are the big hairy fruits hitting me? Because you shook the rambutan tree, says Billy. We hide under a huge branch beside the road. And then suddenly there is a loud cracking sound above our heads. Can you do that? Crack. Very good. <gasps> the huge branch has snapped. Can you do that? Snapped. <gasps> And it's going to hit us. Don't worry, Billy. I'll save you, I shout. 
I dive through the air. Can you do that? Dive through the air. Very good. And push, just like a goalkeeper. And I push my best friend out of the way. The branch smashes. Can you do that? The branch smashes on the road beside us. Whew, that was close. Billy jumps to his feet. He's chewing a mouthful of dirt. Well, thank you, Abby Rose. You were really brave, he says. That's okay, Billy, I say. And your dirty armpits were really smelly. And then we hear a sad crying sound in the tree. What is it? What is it? We spot a small monkey with bright round eyes. Billy, it's the monkey we are looking for, I shout. It's a really cute baby. Yes, says Billy, and it's in real danger. Look. On the other side of the road, a big monkey with bright round eyes is sitting in a different tree. Oh, the big monkey looks at the small monkey in a really sweet and kind way. My daddy always looks at me in the same sweet and kind way. So I shout, that's mummy monkey, that's mummy monkey. Hello, mummy monkey. And are, are you, are you, are you a Raffles bag of lemons, are you? It's a Raffles banded langer, says Billy. And she cannot reach her baby. <gasps> What's going to happen? What's going to happen? The monkeys talk to each other with really funny voices. <coughs> they cry. So, in my loudest voice, I shout, <coughs> Mummy monkey, <coughs> come and get baby monkey. <coughs> and Billy says, your silly monkey talk won't help them. The branch has snapped. The baby cannot reach his mummy. <gasps> Uh-oh, the baby monkey starts to climb down the tree. <gasps> and then his bright round eyes look really scared. Can you see that? Show me your scared face. <gasps> Show me your scared face. <gasps> Very good. Suddenly he stops. We all hear a loud rumbling noise. Can you do that? Rumbling noise. The road is getting brighter. Then we hear a honk, honk sound. Can you do that? Very good. Honk, honk. Oh no, Abby Rose, a car is coming, says Billy. And the baby monkey is sitting in the road. Can you see? Can you see? Oh, this is terrible. My daddy says that if I think really hard about a problem, then I can fix it. So, I shout, I know what to do. You do it, you say it together. One, two, three. I know what to do. The forest is broken and we are going to put it back together. Quick, Billy, follow me. First, we use the magic suitcase as a step. Take your magic suitcase, put it on the floor, step on it, that's it, step on it. Here we go, and then, we're going to step on it and we're going to be tall like my daddy. So stretch, that's it, stretch, stretch, stretch. Then we lift the branch over our heads. Can you see? You do it, lift, 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 very good. We stretch our arms and push the branch towards a hole in the tree trunk. You do it, that's it, stretch, very good, very good. Oh, the branch is the heaviest thing ever. Our tired arms wobble. Wobble your arms. That's it. Our legs shake. Shake your legs. Shake your legs. Very good. We move the branch to the left. Move to the left. That's it. We move the branch to the right. Very good, very good, very good. And then we squeeze it through the hole. We fix the forest, I say. The baby monkey can walk across the trees now. <gasps> But Billy looks really nervous. Show me your nervous face. Very good, very good. 
Yes, but the baby monkey is running out of time. Here we go. The rumbling gets closer and the baby monkey leaps onto the tree trunk. The lights get brighter and he climbs faster and faster. Show me your climbing faster and faster and faster. And then, and then, and then, and then he runs across the branch. Look, Billy, I say, look, he's using our special bridge. We did it, yay, we did it. Mummy monkey hugs her baby at the top of the Rambutan tree. Yay, I shout. Let's say it together. One, two, three. Yay, I shout. We saved the Raffles bag of lemons. Yay. We saved the Raffles banded langer, says Billy. And then he gives me his best smile ever. But you're right. We did fix the forest and we did save them. We wave goodbye to our friends. Wave goodbye. Let me see you. Wave goodbye. Very good. We wave goodbye to our friends with the bright round eyes. Billy grabs the magic suitcase and I find the letters for home. Let's find them together. Ready? H-O-M-E. What does that spell? Jane Goodall? No, not Jane Goodall. Let's try again. Ready? H-O-M-E. What does that spell? Shangri-La? No, not Shangri-La. One more time. Here we go. Ready? H-O-M-E. What does that spell? Yes! Home. It spells home. So now we hold hands. Hold hands. Hold hands. Close our eyes. I can see. No peeking. No peeking. Close your eyes. That's it. And wait for the click. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Let's see. I open my eyes. I am back in my bedroom. Daddy's caterpillar legs are beside me. He says, why is there so much fruit in here? So I say, well, Daddy, my monkey friends love to eat the rambutan fruit, you see, which is just like you. And he says, why am I like a rambutan fruit? I giggle and say, you are both really hairy. And that is the story of the Raffles banded langer. Did you like the story? Yes, yeah, so did I. I hope you do everything you can to protect our beautiful wildlife, especially the Raffles banded Langer. I hope you enjoyed my story and I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. Bye. Wow, kids, didn't you enjoy that story? Neil did such a fantastic job of telling us his own story. And it was brilliant, wasn't it? And also very relevant, don't you think, Jasmine? It's very relevant um, in, in Singapore especially. We have a few green corridors made specifically for the monkeys and the other animals to get from place to place in safety and not have to worry about being run over by cars. Now, um, if we give nature a chance, she will flourish. Dr. Jane and her friends have helped to start a project to plant a, a trillion trees all around the globe. Now, do you know what a trillion is? It's one one and twelve zeros. Whoa. Now, Singapore wants to help in this by planting a million trees all around Singapore in, in different places. And um, we can help too. So uh, we have those tree patches in... Where are they, Sid? Well, good question, Jasmine. I believe we started one of the patches back in 2019 when Dr. Jane Goodall was here herself. She was part of a tree planting mission where we planted over 40 trees at, wow. through the Jane Goodall Institute and the Roots and Shoots program. And we planted them at the Windsor Nature Reserve. Now, kids, 
on a weekend or on an evening, if you're feeling a bit bored and want to get into nature, you can get your mummies and daddies to take you down there and see over 40 of these wonderful trees that were planted there. At the Jane Goodall Institute and at the Roots and Shoots, we often go down there to help the plants and give them a chance to turn into big, beautiful trees. We go down there and weed the areas, we look after it, and it's something we would love for you to join us in. So kids and grown-ups, do come and join us on some of the many, many activities we do at the Jane Goodall Institute, whether it's our monkey walks, whether it's our monkey talks, and our tree planting, or you can be another volunteer like us, like Jasmine and myself being storytellers, and many of the other wonderful volunteers behind the scenes. We would love to have you all here. And kids, remember, we always love to hear from you. If you've got little stories that you'd like to write or pictures or paintings that you want to draw and submit to us, we would love to have it on one of our storytelling sessions. Now, talking of artistic talents and wonderful volunteers, the amazing students at the LaSalle College of the Arts have produced a wonderful story, haven't they, Jasmine? Yes, of course they have. The story is coming up next. It's an animation and it's called Monkey See, Monkey Do. You are inside the forest with your family for a hike. You see a monkey sitting on the road ahead. What kind of monkey do you think it is? Is it a macaque, a langur, or a chimpanzee? You are correct. Macaques are one of the most common primates in Singapore. They eat fruits, nuts, and occasionally crabs. That's why they're also called the crab-eating macaque. You see, it's showing his teeth and closing his eyes. It is trying to talk, yawning, or scaring you. Yes, he is yawning, but you should be careful. If his eyes are open and the eyebrows are raised, that's a sign of aggression. He sees you eating your sandwich. Sharing is caring. Shoo him away. Put away your food. You should keep the food or drink out of the monkey's sight instead of just shooing them away. Human food has artificial flavorings and MSG that will be harmful to them. When they see our food, they will be tempted to take it. Oh no! When you get home from the hike, the monkey is in your house. What's your response? Throw objects at him, adopt him, stay calm and shoo him away. If you see the monkey in your house, try to stay calm. Avoid eye contact and shoo him away with loud noises to the direction where he came in from. Don't try to corner him or hit him because the monkey is most likely lost and just wants to go home. How do you prevent macaques from entering your house? Burn incense. Close all the doors and windows when you are not home. Blast loud music. The best way to keep the macaques out of the house is to close doors and windows if you can, and don't give them a chance because they are very curious and opportunists. Why do you think we shouldn't feed macaques? They will keep coming back. It is bad for the environment. It is bad for the monkey. This is a trick question. It's actually all of the above. The macaques play a key role in dispersing seeds, and if they're addicted to human food, it can upset the biodiversity and reproduction of plants. Human food is also very high in sugar. It can lead to obesity and other diseases like diabetes. We hope you've learned something today about our neighbors, the macaques. It's important to treat them nicely, with respect, like we treat our friends. After all, we are one big family, living on this planet, so we must always remember to love and protect the monkeys. Wow, that was such an interesting story, don't you think, Sid? Yeah, it really was, actually. I really enjoyed it. Well done, students of LaSalle College of the Arts. Thank you for that wonderful animation.
Now, it's also very relevant, kids and grown-ups, because there are some very important learnings we need to take away from that. And remember, right, Jasmine? So one of them is that we should never, ever feed the wildlife in Singapore or anywhere else in the world, for that matter. So it's not just primates, but actually the Wildlife Act was amended last year that could put us into a lot of trouble if we get caught feeding the wildlife. And the reason why we shouldn't feed the, uh, the wildlife, particularly the monkeys and primates, is because the food is not very good for them and it could cause them to rely on human food and then they might be tempted to eat more human food and come looking for it in our places of residences. So whenever we're out and about, if we're in the nature parks or if we're on the island of Sentosa or if we're in suburban areas, in our homes, we should be very careful not to tempt them by leaving food within uh, display to them. Now, another point that's very important is that we have to always make sure we keep our safe distance with our wildlife. Now, whether it's the primates and monkeys all over Singapore, whether it's our beautiful kalugos or slow lorises or even our otters that we see out and about in many suburban areas, we have to be very careful to make sure they have their space because they are still wild animals and we are sharing this wonderful island with our friends in nature. And last but not least, when it comes to us filming and taking pictures or doing selfies of these wonderful creatures that we share this island with, we have to be very respectful of them and make sure we don't get in their way or upset them in the process of us taking their pictures. So some very important lessons we've learnt, I think, from this beautiful animation by the LaSalle College of the Arts. I hope you enjoyed these storytelling sessions. Did you, Jasmine? Of course I did. Now, kids, remember that uh, you can help out with Jane Goodall Institute Singapore by sending us drawings. You can submit them by email, uh, or you can get mommy and daddy to come be volunteers um, with a lot of various different things that we do in Jane Goodall uh, Institute Singapore. Now, we are also a charitable organization, so we do accept donations. And um, last but not least, watch out for Dr. Jane's books in the bookstore. Um, it will be a good addition to your bookshelf. Now, uh, we really enjoyed having you with us today. Uh, and my, I'm Jasmine. I'm Safari Sid. And this is Ida. We'll okay. see you next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.